outstanding image is one with visual and emotional impact. Composition, lighting, exposure, selective focus, etc. all come together to evoke a response whereby the viewer is transcended from their world to the world we have put before them. Oh, that's so cool. So you can't just roll up on a pair of loons or roll up on a subject. You know, we, we paid our dues with this pair and they let us come right next to the boat. You can see they're acting 100% naturally. They're feeding, they sleep right next to the boat. We never feed them, never attempted to feed them. We've just been real slow and just kind of got them acclimated to us. You'll see that I'm trying to lay as flat on the deck as possible to get as low uh, on their level as I can. It just provides a more intimate photograph. Sometimes we'll get up a little bit higher and shoot down on them, which will give us a little bit more depth of field. So we have to be really careful when they're photographing the adult and the chicks that they're parallel to the sensor, so we keep them both in focus. Otherwise, on an angle, even at F11, I can't maintain the depth of field. One advantage that we have being on a boat rather than shooting from shore is we get these beautiful velvet green backgrounds. And that's just a reflection from the trees. So if we get lighter green trees or darker green trees, that's gonna be reflected in the water and subsequently make the backgrounds in our photographs more beautiful. Let's talk a little bit about changing conditions. So on real sunny days, we have hard contrast and we're shooting a bird that's basically black and white. So that normally means that we're gonna underexpose the image just a little bit to ensure detail in the highlights, which makes the head slightly darker. So I can position myself relative to the light and relative to the background, but then I have to wait for the bird to orient itself correctly to the light. Normally for me, with loons, I only photograph when I can see the red eye light up. And the higher the light gets in the sky, the less I'm gonna see that red light. Hence, we're gonna shoot early morning and late afternoon. One thing you'll see is that the loons will spin when they preen and they'll show us a big white chest. And if I want to show detail on that chest, normally I have to stop down the lens a little bit more. So over the years, I've learned on sunny days that it's almost a full stop. So I tend to shoot in manual exposure, and all I do is ratchet the shutter speed up real quick, three clicks to the right. I'm always telling people if the picture looks light, turn the wheel to the right so we can make a faster shutter speed or a smaller hole to let in less light, and I can uh, save the detail in my highlights. And if the loon spins around the other way, then we can open back up. So we're constantly doing that three up, three down. The other thing we're watching is the wind direction. That's really important for the wing flaps. So the birds will always face into the wind when they flap, and we can get these dramatic wing flaps in multiple positions. So typically we want a fast shutter speed to freeze that. If it's real sunny and the light is low, we can backlight them. And right at the peak of the wing flap, they twist their head like this, and you'll get a spiral, a concentric ring of water droplets, which looks unbelievably fantastic in backlighting. We woke up and it's overcast, so how do we adapt to that? These are the conditions we have. We're not gonna sit in the lodge all day. We're gonna make the most of whatever we're given. And that's what we need to do. We need to come out here, assess everything, and figure out how to make the most of it. And as a wildlife photographer, that's paramount. On overcast days like this, we have really soft shadow edges. We have much lower contrast. So it's much easier for me to show all the detail in the highlights and the shadows. But again, we're not gonna get the crazy colors that are reflected in the iridescence of the birds. We gotta start with higher ISOs. We have to start with wider f-stops to keep our shutter speeds high enough to freeze the action. And I'm typically erring on the side of a faster shutter speed. So if the loons do do something, I can record it. If I just say, okay, I'm gonna shoot at, you know, 250th of a second and close down to maybe F8 instead of, you know, five, six, or four, then I'm gonna miss fleeting moments. So one of the things that happens when we're shooting in fog is it lowers the contrast and it degrades the image quality for the subject because we're shooting through a medium now, water droplets. So if I want the subject to be sharper, I need to physically get closer to the subject and that typically means using a shorter lens if possible, and I can still get the ethereal effect in the background, but render the image with detail. It's not all about the photography for me. You have to take the welfare of the animal into consideration for everything that we do. If you see an alter in their behavior, back off. You know, we're not here to do that. We're here just to document whatever it is that they're doing. You know, nobody is gonna get every photograph. I don't care who you are. There are just times where you can't do it, and that's okay. You know, if you're concentrated into one task and something else happens and you miss it, you'll get it next time. But you can make the most of whatever you do set out to do and, 
and that's where that goal and orientation comes in. Again, I pick a window of opportunity that uh, works accordingly for the images that we want to capture.